Hey, Bart. How's it going? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. You got a hand for us? Um, I do. Yeah. Um, so this is um, played in the gardens. Five five. Hawaiian so gardens. It's, uh, yep. Okay. HG five five. So is that an eight hundred cap or something like that? Something. Uh, like no, that? three to six. Three hundred. Three hundred to six hundred. As I, as I was doing the, uh, I recorded some of the flagship podcasts tonight. I played at the Encore Boston Harbor, and they have very very strange structures there. They have a five five. 1000 cap and then their 510 is a 1500 cap i had won a bunch in 55 i had to chip down to go to the 510 really strange whereas hg as i was saying and also commerce like if they have 1500 cap on the 510 their their 55 is not going to be a thousand cap so anyway right yeah and they they invented a 5510 which is you know during you know real covid reopen they invented a 5510 where players just you know did whatever they want for action so that one i think is an 800 cap and mm-hmm. it's a it's a bomb pot every dealer change every new player every time somebody burps i don't know it's like <laughs> it's a crazy game <laughs> bomb pots like no limit bomb pots single board or what yeah i th- i think it's single board okay. yeah and now they have a bounty it's just players you can make their own rules there uh, yeah. so that's a crazy game and it plays a lot bigger than I mean, the structure is between the 5.5 five and the 5.10, but mm-hmm. it probably plays bigger okay. than the 5.10. So Yeah, but anyway, this is the 5.5. Five. Yep. It's eight players. Mm-hmm. Um, they haven't gone to nine. I'm the, I'm the large stack. I cover everybody. This is going to go multi-way, so there's multiple stacks here, but okay. the main villain is like at 9.05. Okay, so V1 is 9.05. Okay. All right. Yep. So... Um, I'm under the gun one. It mm-hmm. goes uh, under the gun raises to 15. Is that the, that's is, it's kind of small, but okay. it is right. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm a uh, UTG one with black Kings. Okay. I raised to 70. So three bet to 70. Okay. Yep. It folds to the hijack. Mm-hmm. The hijack is very high V pip pretty crazy player and he's sitting with a short stack i think he lost most of his money so he has 130 and he calls <laughs> i mean of he course. raises i'm sorry he raises no no yeah he raises all in I'm sorry. oh he raises, he raises all, all in i was yeah. gonna say of, co- of course he calls half of his stack so <laughs> yeah, he, so, right. so he moves no, he all, goes all in moves all in and by the way too piggybacking on the last call when you go 15 to 70, that's a $55 raise. So when he goes 70 to 130, this should open the raise sizing up if it gets that's back right. around to you. Okay. That's right. And I'm loving it. I didn't plan this, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm doing the math. Yep. And and I'm loving it. The cutoff calls too, so I'm loving it even more. Oh so he's God. calling 130. Okay. <laughs> uh-huh. And then it goes, it falls to the big blind. Uh huh. And the big blind re raises to 305. And, how, and is this the big blind is V1? Yes, he's the main villain and he has the 905. But so, he has 600 behind. So 15 to 70, hijack moves all in for 130, which I guess is a four bet, right? Cut off cold calls the four bet, quote unquote. Big yeah. blind, cold five bets, but it's not really a cold five bet to 305 here. And um, I assume that under the gun folds. Under the gun folds, yeah. So under the gun folds. So do you know? Do you remember how deep the cutoff is here? Yeah, the cutoff has two ninety behind. Oh, okay. So that doesn't really even make a difference because I was just saying that once in a while you think about well, if I call, it's going to bring the cutoff in. It doesn't matter. The cutoff is going to be basically all in anyways. Um, so cutoff. Well, yeah, he he has some left, right? Because he's more than right, three hundred five. But, he... but if you call, if you call, then the other guy, um, if he calls, he's basically all in. Uh, this is an interesting one here. Because I, I'm not going to full – so, I, you know, I, 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 I remember – I don't remember what you did. I remember this email. But here's the thing about these sort of multi-way setups. And it's not – you know, it's not super common, but it's not super rare you get into a spot like this. I think that your hand actually needs some equity protection here. We don't think about that pre-flop. You need to clean up. Like, you would probably rather get the cutoff out here. So, what I think – when you've got a situation here where you're going to have a multi-way all-in and you're going to be up against multiple players, even though, say, for example, like the cutoff has ace-jack or something like that, and you're like, oh, like I want the money in, like I would go heads up with this guy, right? But in this multi-way scenario, 
if he has an ace or even some sort of suited connector or a pocket pair, and I'm talking off the cuff here, I would imagine that you very well might want him out for the larger pot for how your hand will do like against four people versus say like three people multi-way. Like I feel like your equity would go up more than trying to like rope him in here for a call. That's sort of off the cuff. So if I'm not folding here, which I'm not, I think I rip it here. I think I, I, rip I think it that's here. a really good point. So yeah, uh, I wasn't thinking about that. There's a couple of things that happen. One, you know, the five bet really threw me off because it it is quite rare to see it. Now, sometimes when you have the five five ten players playing with a five five early in the day before there's enough five five ten games, they do crazy stuff. But this was a, a regular five five player, and he's he's pretty tight. Um, and he, he he's low VP and he's he's um he seems to be you know he's not peeling off very um aggressively or you know he's kind of he's a good player he, i'm not going to say he's abc but he doesn't um, like there's no bluff here that he's bluffing for sure and there's no um so just, i was just one thing really sir cuz i want to again cuz yeah. there there's a chatter here that i respect a lot t crypto who's saying who had initially said before i said that the opposite and and again i'm going off the cuff I, i'm i'm definitely going to admit sometimes when i'm not 100% correct but i'd have to take a i'd have to take a step back and think about this one and look at the equities but again my contention here is is that your overall equity with the cutoff calling all in is worth is worth less than or excuse me the 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 amount of dead the amount of money that the cutoff goes with putting extra in the pot is not worth the equity dip that you take by having somebody all in in a multi-way spot if we were to look at ranges here that's what my contention is i'm not sure if it's 100 percent right i could be wrong about that but that's what my take is so what did, what did you end up do calling here yeah also just also that the cutoff is also very high peeping uh, peeping not as much as the hijack but mm -hmm. you know he's he's pretty loose um yeah i wound up calling i really um i was really cons i I can't remember that many times that I've seen a five bet from a from a. Now I will say so I'm though, obviously not folding. I yeah. can't fold kings, but I'm I'm calling and I'm not happy anymore. Well, I, yeah, but it, well, now I will say if the cutoff is always going to call all in anyways, whether you ship or call, then you could just call to play it like your hand is not quite as strong to keep maybe some of the big blinds bluffs in, and maybe he just bets off into a dry side pot, and that is because. The, it doesn't matter what you do. If you rip it or call, the cutoff's going to go in there anyway. So if I thought the cutoff was super high V-pipping and he was definitely going to get in there, then you could make a case for calling because it makes no difference. Now you're not trying to ISO out um, the right. hand. So hero calls, okay? And what does the cutoff yeah. do? Hero calls, cutoff calls. And the cut So the cutoff is basically all in then? Yes, he has like, um, I don't know, like 115 behind. All right, so cutoff calls, but very short. Okay. So now so the pot's the flop, over a thousand, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The flop is a six five three, rainbow. Six five three rainbow. Okay. Um and the the big blind checks. Big blind checks. So again, the pot's a thousand, and you only have what what six hundred left, something like that. Uh I have more, but yeah, I'm covering. The Wait, big six, there's so 600, 600 left. There's 600 left yeah. from the big blind. I mean, I, I, I mean, at this point, it's just you're never gonna bet fold. I don't think here, right? So, right, it's just an equity denial slash pot. I mean, the only thing that I could possibly get on board with with making a small bet is if you ever think that there's a world where the big blind gets so scared that you cold called his bet that he like check folds queens or jacks. I mean, you can't really fuck this one up now. You know what I mean? <laughs> I may find a way to fuck it up later, but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that's the only case for either betting small or possibly checking, although it would be a disaster if you allow an ace to just sort of show up if he was going to check mm -hmm. fold. But, I mean, he only has like half a pot size bet left, you know? So, yeah, what I what I felt is that he may be tricky here. I mean, this is this is a very dry flop, right? I mean, it's connected low cards, but there's no, you know, it doesn't make sense that somebody has... A straight draw the way the action went pre-flop maybe the, other than the hijack who's only in for like 130 um and you know no two pairs here combo draws are kind of rare here there's no flush draw so 
I, I felt like it, it, w- it could be aces that are checking for, checking for uh, deception. Yeah, but you're never – I mean if you call preflop, right, mm-hmm. and then you're like I'm going to go on any non-ace board, it's not like you're going to check and then fold later on. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Like I'm never going to fold on this board as played, so why am I scared of like protecting against aces? You have half a pot size effective post, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what did you do? So you it, checked. It, I, I I checked and it, and the cutoff checked. I mean, here's here's the thing. Right, cut off. I'm considering cut off all in. He's got one fifteen. But here's the other thing too. If the big blind had like ace king and he's going to fold to you to your bet, if you bet and the big blind folds, you want that fold. If you were right. going to bet and he folded, you want that fold. Your hand actually needs equity protection, right? Because now you're just giving him a free card. And it, and it's just like, there's already one guy all in, this other guy's short. Is he going to start bluffing at the side pot? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So. It, I, I really put him on aces there. So, I mean, <clears throat> not seeing an ace and having him check, in fact, even, you know, made me more concerned. Well, I, I definitely didn't put him on ace king. I don't think he does this with ace king ever. So maybe there's a chance he does it with. A so wait a minute, player. wait a minute. I, I I don't want to have this call. Continue. There's just a little bit of yeah. you know. You're not the first one you know who's had this issue, but there's just a little bit of inconsistency in your logic. So what you're saying here is is that you called preflop, but now that your opponent checked the flop, you put him on aces. So would you have happily got it in if he bet? Would you have jammed? But now he checks the flop and you put him on aces. What about all the other hands where he missed? With like Ace King and stuff like that. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Uh, you, you know, that's I don't mean to I, go I hard think on you. Answer but to that yeah, on, yeah. On the turn. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what's so, the turn? The turn is a uh, another six. There's two clubs on the board now. Okay. Not that it matters much. Very inconsequential. Yep. Yep. And the the big blind goes all in for his remaining six hundred. Well, I mean, you have to call now, right? I mean. It's it's would weren't you prepared to stack off on the flop? I'm not sure that I thought it all the way through. Um, I knew that definitely if an ace comes, then I am folding. Um, I was happy to take it to showdown, uh, and I thought bet, that you know with queens or jacks it. with queens or jacks that he would take it to showdown as well. He wouldn't, you know, try to bluff at it because he has to he has to beat the cutoff too, right, for the side pot. So he's he can't really be bluffing here. Because the cutoff is, like you're saying, all in. So there is the dynamics of the three-way going on here. I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't want to take it to showdown against queens and jacks if I have kings. So, all right. So the big blind goes all in. I, I folded. I tank folded. Uh, you're giving this guy a lot of credit here. If I'm prepared to stack off preflop with kings and I'm prepared to just call the rope a guy in behind me and then I get a safe board, there, there's just a little bit of inconsistency with the logic, but... What what did the cutoff do? Uh, the cutoff called, of course. After checking back the flop, I don't think it's yeah. I don't think that's of course, but cutoff calls, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For him, it's it's not that much more to call, and right, um, right. yeah, the river is uh, inconsequential. It's an eight. All right, so the river's um, an eight, okay. The reveal is that the big blind had queens, and he won the pot. Oh, Mister <clears throat> Mister yeah. G, <laughs> it hurt, Mister S G. But you you see what I'm saying though. Like, it actually makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, the big blinds, I think. The only reason for you to check back the flop is, if you go back to what I said, if you listen back to this call, is somehow if you thought the guy was such a nit that if you put money in the pot, your call of his five bet was so scary that he was going to check fold queens or jacks. That would be the only reason to check it back. But now you got exactly what you want. You make your hand look like it was ace-king and you missed. And now he put all the money in with queens. Yeah, so, so you're saying at, it's a it's an auto call. I'm saying rip the flop. I'm saying bet the flop. I'm saying call the turn. <laughs> okay, but I mean it, it just you know it, cut off had some bullshit or something. So queens won, right? It, it didn't show hijack call, cut off didn't show. Yeah. So Did you have to walk had. that one off at all? <laughs> um, it it was uh it, it was tough. Yeah, it was tough. I mean. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't usually lay down kings. You know, I'm, I'm actually quite aggressive in many cases, but I just felt that this guy was so tight that I didn't think, I thought he would take it to showdown. And well, I guess I was wrong, but. 
but remember though, you might have lost track of pot size though too, because remember the pot's like a thousand plus, right? That's yeah. also true. I didn't think. And and by the way, I've done I've done that before. I've definitely done that before. Um, not so much recently, but I have lost major, major pots where I've made some ridiculous folds because I lost, lost size of pot size. So it happens to us all. Just, you know, take a step back and what you should learn from this is just looking at, you're trying to be logically consistent throughout the, the hand when you're doing hand reading. And that comes with practice. It comes with studying. It comes with talking hands with other players. So, you know, you might, if you look back at the live chat, you might get a little bit flamed, but I appreciate you, you calling <laughs> it in, right? That's and, okay. and walking through it. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Bart. So. All right. Thank you very much, SG. Remember, guys, we're all here to learn, right? We're at different stages of our career, you know, playing poker and things like that. 